Just wondering if rumors are true about you know whose ego from experience. I questioned him once about how he treats his team and was blocked instantly. In my opinion, this rumor is true. I witnessed it firsthand and I saw him treat people just as poorly. Well, hello there. My name is Eric. I am the host of Paranormal Highway. And I'm just talking to you, just you and I. You and I. I want to talk about Zach Baggins and Nick Roth. And I thought this is important, especially f for me to talk about, because I was on another show that talked about Zach. But when I'm on other people's show, and I, I try my best to be PG, because, you know, I don't want any person's channel to get in trouble because of me. So on my channel, ah, who cares? Right? Who cares if I get in trouble? Because the truth needs to be spoken. You know, when Ghost Adventures came out, I watched it. I watched it with my daughter. You know, and I taught my daughter, you know, we know it's not real, real. We know there's points of it, of the investigation that is real. But we know not every sighting that they have on the show is real you know there is a lot of exaggeration and I can I can accept some exaggeration because the idea is you want the show to grow and unfortunately a show that's a hundred hundred percent truthful just ain't gonna make it so I understand you add the music you add a little bit of scenery or something and I get that and and, and, and that's fine and that's fine but there is a point of when exaggeration goes a little bit too far. You know, I say it's different for everybody. 30% exaggeration, okay, I get it. But once you start hitting 40%, 50 and above, that's another form of lying. If you agree with that or not, it is another form of lying. It, it, it's it's one thing to go out and fake a total video, right? You faking it. I mean, that's bad. That is really bad. Faking everything, right? Faking it. That's like the worst kind. Or people who supposedly created reverse engines and UFOs. That's false. But when you take something simple, like a sound or a tap, and you run outside like you're scared to death, like, oh my God, oh my God, that becomes a lie and an exaggeration. Because, listen, if it's your first time investigating, I have done a lot of investigations. I know some of you are watching this now, have done a lot of investigations yourself in the beginning you probably would be freaked out with every scratch every sound but more to get used to it unless something bites you you feel a bite screaming and all that i'm sorry that's exaggeration that's the same as lying i mean how many times you walk into it's almost like sometimes you walk into a, a building at night and, and, and you feel something just went cold. And I've learned on these shows that they, they do go to some spots that are cold. But as soon as they feel something cold, they exaggerate and say, oh my God, it is completely frozen. So did they technically lie that a temperature kind of changed? No. But when you exaggerate how, how cold it is, that becomes a lie. Because... In the paranormal world, when something becomes even colder, it's it, 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 in theory, it's pulling energy. And when it pulls energy, that part of the energy being pulled, that part, it's supposed to be freezing cold. So I didn't get that. Oh, it didn't get that. They didn't, they didn't understand that. Well, that's good. That's why we're here to learn. You know, and so... And listen, and listen, you, you got to listen to this. And this is important. This is very, 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 very important. You don't punish people or hate people because they become successful. 
that becomes more of jealousy. You're jealous of somebody else's success. Okay? You know, it's like that thing, like, you call your band that you love a sellout because they got a contract with the major label and they say the music has changed. If you don't like the newer music, that's fine. But calling somebody a sellout, you got to watch out because if you want a band or a show to continue making music or shows for you, they got to have success. Without success, you're going to get nothing. You don't always have to agree that the shows are getting better or worse. I mean, that's up to the individual. So you should never hate a show for the success that they get. But the question is, is how they handle the success. Are they the same team or the same band that you liked? You know, are they still creating it from the heart? Because we know that sometimes money corrupts it's a fact money can corrupt some people can handle it more and some people can't now when you look at zach and nick groff and there's aaron but i'm going to keep aaron out of this this is between uh, zach and nick groff in the true history of ghost adventures we know that nick groff was the one who put the team together to do these investigations. You know, the famous clip of uh, when, when you saw Nick Groff in the video and you saw like, like a ghost, like, like walking across. And we know that a local news channel picked that up, a local news channel first. And then it hit, it got national where they had enough money to make a documentary. And there's some things that happened in that documentary where Discovery Channel's like, hey, we got a hit with Ghost Hunters. You know, what if we use these three guys and we'll do what they what they do the lockdown? You know, they're locked in there. They can't come out. But we all know, even in a lockdown, when it's only in one day, when you get locked down, you know, they're doing a lot of work inside for the shots and screens and, and all that. So let's not pretend that they lock the gates and you, and somebody's filming for the next eight hours. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of setup. <laughs> and between that setup is hopefully they get, they get the footage. This discovery channel knew that they're going to have something with this channel, with this show, because you had a handsome guy. I mean, they're all handsome guys in the show. Nick, Sansom, Aaron, Zach, but Zach, you know, muscular. He's got that, 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 that attitude, you know, like I'm, I'm Zach. You may, may all bow down to me. You know, you see in schools, you see bullies, um, you know, you know, uh, you always have like some of those preppy kids, you know, my age where they think they're better than you. And that's who Zach has really become. Now, I don't know Zach before Ghost Adventures and before all that, how he really was. I mean, I didn't grow up with him. But I'm just I'm just looking at the information and what I've seen in front of me. Okay? don't get, So, like I said, I didn't grow up with him. I wasn't in the studio. I wasn't behind the scenes. I'm just judging what I've heard. What I listened to, and what I heard Nick say, what I heard Aaron say, and what I heard Zach say. But Zach's personality is about me. And you can see where the cameras focus more on Zach than Nick and Aaron. Now, Aaron was the cameraman in the beginning. So, so, so it's really Nick and Zach, equal partners of the, the the lead investigators but you saw how the camera loves Zach's attitude more and acts and Zach is that actor he's like the actor he was really playing the part of it and they knew it and they knew the show and the ratings went up and you know when you start getting all those comments and all that and people kind of it kind of like poor Nick kind of get shoved 
little bit to the side when all the ideas of the places to go and the investigation set up and how it works really comes from Nick. He's like the hard worker behind the scenes. At the time, Aaron's just a camera person and becomes now like, like an investigator, you know, part of the show. And during the, the seasons, you kind of saw that it wasn't Nick and Zach. It was really Zach and everybody else. And the, you could tell that the corruption started. You could look back when they do cons, autographs. You know, Zach was able to charge more. He's more popular. So Zach became the leader. Not by themselves. Is what the studio has given them. And the public kind of like gave him that power ring. Zach, you are Ghost Adventures when... It should have been those three. Should have been those three. Nick should have been equally part of it, but it's not. And part when you have a successful show and all that, and as as you see in the movies, the actors become producers, they become directors, even though they, they're staying on the same show, that they not really branch out, but they have like other projects. You know, a lot of bands have their main band, and then during the off times. They have their uh, experimental bands with other band members and they go out and play some shows, concerts, whatever, you know, that's what they do. And Nick, since he, his brains was the one who created the Ghost Adventure style, you know, he wanted to branch out a little bit, not quit the show. He wanted to produce some other shows, which he was in his right and Zach could do it too. But the, but the change starts happening when Zach... Wanted it all for himself. He didn't like it. If if Nick was coming part of a producer of another show, you know, because he might make he might make some more money. Nobody could make more money than Zach. And when you have the studio to say, Zach, you're the man, baby. You're the man. You're the man. You're you're it. And they made him the head of the team. There were multiple questions regarding whether or not you believe that you have been limited or blocked from appearing on Travel Channel. In my opinion, I do believe I was blocked from the network and continuing my shows specifically because of one host who I used to work with. Why? Zach can have his people go out and produce other shows. No. No. So what does Zach do? You know what, guys? I don't want Nick on the show no more. Now, I can't cut his contract because the contract is with Discovery Channel. So I'll make it easy for Discovery. You either keep me on leading this Ghost Adventures or what I mean is you're going to keep me on? Nick has to go. But if you guys want to keep Nick, then you know what? I'll just go somewhere else, right? Because I'm Nick. I, I'm sorry, I am Zach Baggins and I can do whatever I want because the show ain't gonna last without me. And the problem is when the studio took Zach's side, and I, I'm sure that at the time, you know, the studio wanted all three, but you know, you can't lose your, your most popular your popular guy can it happen right it can't happen so nick has to go see the problem is you have the travel channel i mean there, there, there's so many discovery channel history channel discovery channel themselves owns i, I don't know how many like 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 over 10 different channels and of course streaming they own a lot so, and, and, and this Discovery family tree of channels is what usually plays the paranormal shows. So it's not like, well, he can just join another network. Well, most all these networks are owned by the same network because Disney is not gonna do uh, a paranormal show like that because they're a family. So there's not like you have all these choices. So when people say he needs to jump another network, yeah, but they're all owned by Discovery. So Zach be like, well, if he joins that, 
network gone because you know because that's what you know that's what happened so so they want him gone he's gone so nick paranormal lockdown wasn't it only lasts like three seasons because the show is getting popular and zach cannot have the paranormal lockdown overshadow him because he's got to stay on top so I just can't. Just can't. And it's just sad because Zach feels if most of the paranormal shows are gone, there's less. You know, you know, and and the, you know, there's a loyal following with Nick because of Ghost Adventures that he created. That might take his side over his. It might, you know, might have a rating drop. So the best way to do it is just not have him have a show. So, when people, you know, so maybe those people who were following Nick, since Nick doesn't have a show, they'll jump right back to Ghost Adventures. It's messed up. It's messed up. You know, looking at myself, I know I'm part of no network. You know, I'm just a small, tiny YouTube channel. But myself, you know, when my channel was growing fast, in the beginning, I mean, it was growing fast. You know, I was at the one time getting 780, and I had a lot of different people on my channel, and some of them, um, a lot of some of them are better speakers than me. Don't get me wrong; I'm not the best speaker in the world, and I, I'm the first one to admit to you that I'm not the best speaker in the world. I'm not. I'll admit that. I'll admit that right now. I'll admit that to you. I'm not the best. When I helped out some other channels and when they started growing, they shift me away. I had a, you know, so I, what, you know, they, they shift away. They, they, they go away. When their popularity, and I understand they have the personality better than mine and, you know, they have easier, they're going to make it easier than I can. I have to work twice as hard and I get that and I'm willing to work twice as hard but they forget about you. They don't really talk about you. They kind of leave you alone. I had one channel. I actually had one channel who told their followers if he sees them in my channel, he will ban them from his. That really happened. That really happened. Cause a, a disturbance in the force, I guess you could say. You know, December is in a force, and it's sad, and I and I it, it it happens two three times. So so for me, people like Zach really hits hard with me. It really truly hits hard because I, I seen it. Now what? But now the difference between me, of course, Nick. He was already with the network. You know, he was making a, an income from it. I'm not making no income from, from, um, you know, YouTube or anything. No sponsors. Nobody wants to sponsor me. <laughs> but that's all right. You know, but was there an opportunity? I don't know. I would never know because even when channels leave or not, if they would have said, cool, may, uh, you know, Maybe I would have grown even faster, but when you have people turn on you, and it's, it's, so it's almost exactly like what Zach has done, and it's a shame. There's there's no there's no room for it. You know, I remember uh, Foggy. He, he's in charge of the Marvel. Um, you know, uh, I remember he made a comment about you know they're saying that. Marvel and DC, right? They're going against each other. You know, it's about who's better, right? Right. And I remember Kim Foggy said he doesn't want uh, a DC movie, superhero movie to fail because every success that they have hypens people to watch more superhero movies. So in a, in a way, it helps Marvel, even though they're from two separate parties because more people are into it. So if, if, if Zach would slap himself in the mirror and realize if Nick has successful show paranormal and he and you know that he might have a lot of new followers say I like Nick he's great 
Oh, Nick was on Ghost Adventures and they're still on? You're going to gain. It is healthy to have healthy, strong channels. You don't always have to grow by being the only big dog on the block. There's room for everybody. And if everybody works together and have fun and crisscross, that's the way to go. You know, you know, I've told people I would love to have a show on Discovery. As long as they let me just have fun and do it the way I want to do it and be truthful. And I will not exaggerate. That's not how it is. I wasn't haunted. Oh, well, next one. You know, and, and, that, and that costs enough ratings. All right. At least I have my shot. At least I have my shot. So I don't know if <laughs> I'm sure Zach's not going to be watching me on this video. I, I, I guarantee you that. You know, Zach's off his own world. But but if, if Zach is there, Zach, realize it's healthy to know this whole team of yours. If Aaron decides to leave tomorrow and, you know, wants to do his whole show where he wants to be like you and be on top, support it. Nourish it. Because it only helps your show more. And there's no reason to exaggerate. So when you get possessed, take a couple aspirins, call it a day, drink some water, okay? You probably don't need a priest to do a seance on you. Come on, okay? Okay? So if you're listening to this, take a couple aspirins, relax. So that's my thoughts on the Zach Baggins and Nick Groff. And I hope there'll be a new project with Nick Groff coming out because he's a very talented guy. I respect his, his, um, his paranormal research and uh, I want him to see, and I, I want, and I want Zach to succeed too, but as a real person, not Zach who takes an idea of a museum for somebody else and makes it his own, get it out there first with the name recognition. I'm not talking about not that Zach, the Zach who, who, who went with Nick on the first investigation ever. That's the Zach I want to see again. Not the new Zach. Well, not really new. He's been like that. Probably started growing after the second season, third season, fourth season. But beyond that, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I would love to see you guys during my live shows or, or whatever in the future. And, uh, there's always something I always have to say. I hope to see you guys all next time on the Paranormal Highway. Why you left Ghost Adventures? In my opinion, based on what I was told, a certain individual that I worked with called up the network and said he would not show up at the next location if I showed up. Oh.